What's up, everybody? Welcome to the video. This is going to be my first look for week eight of the NFL season on DraftKings and FanDuel. And we have a loaded slate. There's no bye weeks this week, so it should be a fun one. If this is your first time here, my name is Chris Pinnell. I break down NFL DFS each and every single week on this channel. What we like to do in these first look videos is take more of a casual approach because I don't have any projections or anything like that set in place. We're simply glancing over the slate, looking at the pricing, the matchups, and we'll try to put together a single entry type build. And then later on in the week, once I've actually had time to collect all the data and run the numbers, we'll do the core plays video, putting it all together. All right, so let's get into it here. We're gonna start with the quarterback position because this is the foundational piece to our lineup because it's gonna give us the direction of a handful of players that we're pretty much going to have to play. And I'll tell you right now, just after scanning over the slate a little bit, this does not look like a good week to spend down at the quarterback position. Like, especially below 6K, I don't see anybody that looks viable here. Deshaun Watson, if he was going to be healthy this week, I realize he looked pretty bad in his five pass attempts last week. Almost had two picks. The one got overturned. Ended up getting uh, checked out for a concussion. Guess he cleared that, but they didn't want to bring him back in until they got more uh, an advanced look at his throwing shoulder. But a decent spot versus Seattle if he was fully good to go, but it's really tough to trust that health. But I'll tell you right now, I think we are going to be spending up. We have Patrick Mahomes in a great spot versus the Denver Broncos, one of the worst defenses this season. And Mahomes just absolutely shredded the Los Angeles Chargers last week for 424 passing yards, four touchdowns, and nearly 38 DraftKings points with a monster game. And while he kind of wasn't that great versus Denver, still got over 300 yards, but only 21 fantasy points. It's just because the touchdowns weren't there, but I'd have to expect. If Patrick Mahomes is going to throw the ball 40 times, we're going to get more than one passing touchdown most weeks so Mahomes is a 100% in play here versus the Denver Broncos on the road in Arrowhead 27 point implied team total which I believe is the second highest on the slate only behind the Miami Dolphins versus the New England Patriots 46.5 over under which doesn't sound that great but on this slate I believe the best one we have is a 47 point over under which is again the Dolphins and the Patriots and the more, majority of that is going to the Dolphins here as they are nine and a half point favorites so it's another week where doesn't look like it's going to be a very high scoring slate just based off of over unders, but there are some decent games that I am looking forward to. But Mahomes, 100% in play here. Jalen Hurts also going to be viable. I know he's kind of got nicked up in the last game, but he's expected to be fine. And his floor is pretty much unmatched by any other quarterback. And while he doesn't possess the passing upside on a week to week basis of a guy like Patrick Mahomes that you'd expect, or maybe even a Tua with his amazing weapons and Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. Passing-wise, Hertz has really not been that bad this year. If you're looking since week three, 280 yards, 319, 303, 280, 280. So he's been right there with them. He's getting the passing touchdowns, and he has that insane rushing floor where he nearly gets a rushing touchdown almost every single week. We're getting double-digit carries some weeks, and yeah, Hertz is a very safe option. Great matchup versus the Washington Commanders. 25-point implied team total here on the road in Washington. I have no issues with Jalen Hertz. Lamar Jackson, loved him last week, ended up having pretty much a ceiling game from Lamar, his best game of the year. Week 7 versus Detroit here, 21 for 27, 357 passing yards. We cannot expect that most weeks. Coming into that game, he was averaging 208 passing yards per game with three passing touchdowns and then 9 for 36 on the ground with a rushing touchdown. That's just the upside that Lamar offers you every single week. He's kind of like the, I don't want to call him the Walmart version of Jalen Hurts because that's probably not fair to Lamar, but I would say he's just like a, Slightly less better version of Jalen Hurts, but he has that insane upside and a really decent floor as well, just not quite as safe as Jalen. But a great matchup here versus Arizona. We know that their defense is nothing to be too, uh, too concerned about. So Lamar is definitely at the top of the ranks once again this week. Tua, he does not offer you any rushing upside whatsoever. You're lucky if you get a rushing attempt, but even then we're talking zero to pretty much five yards every single week and not going to get you that rushing touchdown. So pretty much what you need from Tua is everything through the air. But when you have guys like Tyreek Hill, and Jalen Waddle on the field. That's pretty easy to get some good damage done. And on the season, he's averaging roughly right around 300 passing yards per game. But that was heading into last week. Only had 216 yards versus Philly, so that probably went down a little bit. I do not have my numbers right in front of me, but still Tua. Going to be one of the top options here as they do possess the highest implied team total of the week. Now, I just hate Patriots games in general, but he's definitely going to have to be on, on the uh, consideration board for tournaments. And if we are spending down a little bit, I would say the only one I have real interest in is going to be C.J. Stroud here versus the Carolina Panthers. We know their defense is obviously nothing too shy away from. He's only completing just over 50% of his passes this year, but he's a rookie, so we will cut him some slack. But he's not really turning the ball over. One interception this season in six weeks. And overall, for the price tag that he's at, he's been delivering some pretty solid fantasy games. 
Last two weeks in tougher matchups, only 14 and 15 points, but this is definitely a softer spot. On the road in Carolina, we have a 23-point implied team total for CJ Stroud. And if you want to stack this game up, I'm not going to do it in this specific build, but it's not that hard to do because you can use Nico Collins, which I don't know what his price tag is, but I can't imagine it's anything too expensive. Or in the back with a guy like Adam Thielen, who's only $6,600, despite getting 15 targets every single week. And then I'm sure Tank Dell isn't overly expensive either. So I don't mind the CJ Stroud Panther stacks. Well, Houston Panther stacks this week as the price tags won't be too bad because if you want to spend up at running back or wide receiver, that is 100% one way to do it. Now the quarterback we're going to roll with, I used Lamar in my last video. I feel like just using him again here, I won't be able to use him in the core plays video later on the week because I try not to be redundant. So let's just scroll with Lamar here. Hopefully the good times keep rolling here, but I love the spot versus Arizona. It's also one of the late games. So if you're someone that likes to have a late night hammer, well, Lamar is definitely in a prime position to do just that. All right, so moving over to the running back position, since I have Lamar and he's a bit pricey, and then I obviously have to have two stacking options with them. Now with Lamar and rushing quarterbacks, you don't actually have to have two, but just for the sake of these videos to stay consistent, that is what the route I am going with. Now, since Mark Andrews, I know is, I believe, around six to $7,000, that's gonna eat up a little bit of salary. Lamar's above 8,000 bucks. So I probably can't fit in a guy like CMC, which I don't even really want to. This week versus Cincy doesn't seem necessary because we have a ton of mid-range running backs that are in great spots this week. Now, I'm not gonna put Raheem Mostert in here because I am personally gonna go down to this lower 6K range, but you can give me the RB1 as a nine and a half point favorite playing at home versus the New England Patriots, who we know their defense hasn't exactly been amazing this year it's not been as bad as their offense but it's still nothing i would be too shying away from and as the rb1 in the miami dolphins offense i realize this team struggled to run the football versus philly and jeff wilson is back but most is still your rb1 here and we know this is a very highly valuable role though most is still in play for tournaments for me maybe the ownership gets lower just because it didn't go off last week but i'd be fine to be overweight in tournaments alvin kamara if you can give me like wide receiver triple one upside because he's going to get you 10 to 15 targets it seems like not that i would ever project him for that but we have two games now where he's had 14 targets this season Derek carr is just the dump off king and when you're going to get that kind of volume through the air and still get heavy volume on the ground you are an elite level rb1 with major upside every single week and a super safe floor like his worst game this year is 17 points and it's not like he's absolutely killing it on the ground he's getting the work 11 12 19 17 carries but this volume in the passing game, we can probably cross out New England because they won that game 34 0. So, of course, you don't really have to check the ball down too much or throw the ball. So, if we remove that game, 14 targets, 8, 14. Now, is it leading to a ton of yardage? It did last week, but not, not really. But it doesn't matter. On DraftKings, those points add up in a hurry 12 catches and 13 catches. And I believe I read a stat where he has more catches than any running back. He's only played like four weeks this season, which is insane. So, yeah, Kamara has one of the absolute safest floors and an insanely high ceiling. And it's a great matchup versus Indy. We saw the Browns running backs eat versus them last week. So, if we had the money for Kamara, I would absolutely love him. Travis Etienne, he gets a ton of touches every single week with them both in the passing game. Pretty solid matchup on the ground versus Pittsburgh here. And it's just really hard for him to bust. I know we had a bad week versus Atlanta, but they've had a pretty good run defense so far this year. And Kansas City wasn't great. But outside of that, I mean, Travis Etienne has definitely been one of the best running backs in fantasy football so far this season. DeAndre Swift would also be viable. It's not looking like we're going to go with a Eagle stack. So if you want to get a piece of them, DeAndre Swift, who's pretty much locked in for 15 plus opportunities every single week with passing game work, 6,300 bucks in a good matchup versus Washington. I would be totally fine with that. Isaiah Pacheco looks like one of my favorite running backs of the entire week. I don't understand why he's at this price tag. I said it last week. I know he didn't have a great game on the ground, only 32 yards, but still got into the end zone. So he salvaged your day with 16 fantasy points. Don't think you're really going to complain too much at $6,000 for that. But if you're going to be the RB1 on one of the best offenses in football with the best quarterback in football, and I get a decent matchup here, and by decent, I mean great. The Denver Broncos have been the worst team in the league versus running backs so far this season. He just faced them in week six, and while he didn't get into the end zone, we're still talking over 20 total opportunities. So again, if you're going to be meeting all that criteria that I just talked about, you're the RB1 for the Chiefs facing the worst run defense in football, and you're getting passing game involvement, that's now 10 targets the past two weeks for Isaiah Pacheco. Sign me up all day. I think he should be around $7,000. So keep using him at this cheap price point because at some point it's going to have to go up. So we're going to put in Pacheco here at $6,100. bucks. And since we don't have Mahomes, I want a piece of that Chiefs offense. And he checks every single box. Now he's not a home favorite, but he's still a favorite here. Seven and a half points with the, one of the highest implied team totals on the entire slate. So you got to love Isaiah Pacheco this week. Brees Hall is another guy that I really like. He's only $5,900. bucks. I mean, like Dalvin Cook has pretty much been kicked to the curb at this point. Tough matchup versus Philly in week six. And you did get that touchdown at the end because they pretty much let him score. 
But we did see that awesome game versus Denver, which we know how bad their run defense is. But 22 carries, 177 yards, ripped off a long touchdown. You get for 31 fantasy points. He's going to have involvement in the passing game. And the New York Giants, not good versus running back. So at 5,900 bucks, you can sign me up for some Brees Hall. And after that, there isn't too much else I like. A couple quick hitters from Andre Stevenson. If you are stacking Miami up, he is not the worst run back option because he does get dump offs. He's involved in the passing game. Jerome Ford is doubtful for this week, so that puts Kareem Hunt firmly in play. Now, he's fantasy point-wise the past two weeks. He's been all right, but he's not been efficient whatsoever. But versus Seattle, the Browns are going to have to move the ball somehow, and if, depending on how Deshaun Watson's health is, if it's P.J. Walker once again, should just be a heavy dose of Kareem Hunt, and I guess Pierre Strong will also get some involvement. And then we also have Daryl Henderson at 4800 bucks, who looks like he's going to be the starting running back for this team. Him and Royce Freeman basically... Split the snaps. Zach Evans was not involved at all. Didn't see any snaps. Henderson led the way around 60% of the snaps. Royce Freeman around 40%. 18 carries, 61 yards, got into the end zone, had two targets. But if you can get me 15, 20 opportunities below 5K on an offense that has produced fantasy relevant running backs for quite some time now, I will take it. Now, I'm not going to plug him in for this build, but I think for tournaments, He's going to be playable. It's just that he's not the only guy that's going to get touches. So it's not like it's not a play or anything. And wide receivers, there's so many of them to talk about. And without me running projections and just looking at how I have projected target shares going and whatnot, it's going to be hard for me to really go down the list here and talk about them because almost all these elite level wide receivers are going to be in play every single week despite their matchups. But let's just do this to make this easier. Since we have Lamar, we're going to have to try to get two pass catchers here. Now, one of them is going to be Mark Andrews at the tight end position. So let's just plug him in right now. It's at 6400 bucks. Let's move on to wide receiver again. And Zay Flowers is the bona fide wide receiver one in this offense. I don't know exactly how expensive he is. I would assume somewhere in this 5K range. Hopefully he hasn't hit 6K yet. Yeah, 5600 bucks. So pretty much what he was last week. Six targets, four catches, 75 yards. Not getting to the end zone, but double-digit points once again. And I believe he's had double-digit points, yeah, every single week besides week four versus Cleveland. And they have been shut down versus wide receivers besides last week. Versus Indianapolis Colts, where both Pittman and Josh Downs had solid gains, but he's been consistent. He's got big play upside, and he's the number one receiver for Lamar, so he makes perfect sense for this build. And that's really not too bad of a stack. I know Lamar is a little bit pricey, but we can get the wide receiver one below 6K and a great matchup versus Arizona. And then, really, the true wide receiver one, Mark Andrews, but tight end one for the Ravens at 6400 bucks. Not too expensive of a stack. Now we need a run back option, and we just got news like a minute ago that Zach Ertz is going to be placed on IR. So I'm curious to see what Trey McBride's price point is. Yeah, it looks like he's 2800 bucks. In the past couple of weeks, he's pretty much taken over the tight end one role for this offense, five targets, six targets. And while it's not like super fantasy relevant targets because Josh Dobbs obviously isn't the greatest quarterback out there, that does put him in play here at 2800 bucks. The problem is I don't want to go double tight end. If you are using Lamar, you're pretty much tied to Mark Andrews because it doesn't make any sense to not play these two together. And had a great game last week, two touchdowns, 22 fantasy points. So McBride's probably not the route I'm going, but Marquise Brown makes perfect sense once again. I liked him a lot last week, and the volume was there. The problem is, I said, they're not highly valuable targets. Like, getting 10 targets from Josh Dobbs is probably equal to getting, like, four to five targets from Patrick Mahomes. Still with three catches for 49 yards, 7.9 fantasy points, but you would like to see just a little bit more. But assuming they're trailing in this game, as they do come in as eight-and-a-half-point dogs, and they are at home. So we're in the dome. Don't have to worry about any weather, which is nice. So we're going to plug him in here just because he makes sense for this lineup. And if they're trailing, hopefully we can get double digit targets. And <laughs> just kind of have to hope he gets a big play because we know Josh Dobbs isn't going to deliver too many efficient targets, more than likely. So at this point, we have 4,200 bucks left. We'll try to get to wide receiver three at the end here because I don't know exactly what kind of money I'm going to have to work with. So let's just try to plug in a cheap defense. And I obviously cannot play the Broncos. The Patriots, no thank you. Cardinals would make zero sense for this build. So the first one I'm seeing that might make any sense, potentially the Vikings versus Green Bay. Now, I hate the Vikings defense. I don't think they're very good. But Jordan Love isn't very good either. Now, they're on the road in Lambeau, which I don't like. But the Vikings didn't get absolutely shredded by the 49ers. So that's at least one positive thing to look at. So I don't really have a strong stance here, but I need to save some money somewhere. So let's just plug in the Vikings. I'm obviously not too excited about it. How many points did they score? Versus, um, well, I guess their game log isn't up versus San Francisco yet, but I don't think they got murdered. Had a couple of turnovers in the pick at the end, so hey, maybe we can get a couple of picks from Jordan Love. Obviously, he hasn't been the greatest quarterback in the world this season. So at this point, we have 5,100 bucks left for our last couple of spots. So that's going to leave us probably just going, probably going balanced because I don't really think there's any absolute pump plays. 
that I'm going to like this week. Now, again, I had to look at projections once I run them, and maybe I am missing something here at the bottom. Obviously, if Jordan Addison happened to be out, we had Brandon Powell here at 3200 bucks. We did return to that game. So let's see here. I know there's a couple mid-range wide receivers that I thought looked decent. Rasheed Rice, someone that is rising up in my rankings quite a bit. Josh Downs, someone I do like. He's been pretty consistent with Gardner Minshew. He's going to get the volume. 12 targets, 3, 6, 8, 6, the last three weeks, 15, 13, 26 points, two games in a row with a touchdown for Josh Downs. The 4,800 bucks looks pretty appealing. You also have Kendrick Bourne here at 4,700 bucks. They should be trailing in this game versus Miami. Beatable pass defense, 19, 17 points the past two weeks. I actually don't hate the Kendrick Bourne play, so let's just plug him in here. It leaves 5,500 bucks left for our last spot. And Nico Collins. Kind of grab my eye right there. Like I said, I kind of like the Houston stack a bit this week, and it's a great spot versus Arizona. And Nico Collins has been pretty solid so far in the season. He gets consistent volume. He's got big play upside. So I actually don't hate it. Now, again, got to take some more time to look through it all, but just kind of eyeballing it here. I think this is a pretty good build. So we have Lamar Jackson double stacked with Zay Flowers and Mark Andrews. It's ran back with Marquise Brown. Isaiah Pacheco and Brees Hall at the running back position. Just really solid price points for guys that have a lot of upside and get a lot of volume in their respective offenses. Kendrick Bourne, just because he's a last piece fit pretty much, good spot versus Miami. I believe he has a currently around a 30% market share of the team's air yard so far this season, a 20% target share. Pretty much the wide receiver one on that team. I think he solidified that at this point. Nico Collins, the wide receiver one for C.D. Stroud. It's a great matchup versus the Carolina Panthers, so I love that. And the Vikings defense, well, it's not pretty, but neither is Jordan Love and it fits. So with that being said, that's all I got for today's video. I hope you did enjoy, and if you did, make sure you leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel on your way out. And I'll have my core plays video ready later on in the week for you all to watch if you want. But I wish you all the best of luck, and I'll see you all next time.